Udall, Secretary of the Interior. Water. Mr. President, the people in Pueblo have the good sense to put the speakers out in the sun, so we were certain to be brief and I certainly shall try to be. This has been a very exhilarating trip to the President, to all of us. In the last 30 or 36 hours, we've seen the Great Plains of the Midwest, the Rocky Mountain country, and now out to California. I should like to say, too, when one goes to a place like Yosemite, you don't have to talk conservation. You breathe it. You live it. And this has really been a highlight of our experience and our trip. Also, on behalf of the federal people, I should like to thank Ralph Brody and his committee for the very splendid job they have done in preparing this celebration here today. There's an old saying in the West, Mr. President, that there's no fight like a water fight. And there has been... And it was a running fight and a bitter one at times in the state of California. A water fight for many years. And it took real statesmanship and real leadership to meet this point of culmination today. But this is a, a high point, I think, in the history of California, that you have overcome sectionalism. You have overcome the divisions that were preventing development and growth. And as far as I'm concerned, looking over our nation, I think this great cooperative water effort puts California in a class by itself of all the 50 states. And I think, too, to be fair, it puts Pat Brown in a class by himself as the best water governor of all of our 50 governors. <laughs> it's my responsibility to in introduce four people who have particular importance on this occasion. The first, and I want all of them to come up here and take a bow, the first of them is my right arm, a Californian who not only fights like a tiger for California, but who believes in the development of all of our resources. As I said last night, the historian Bernard DeVoto, who knew more, I think, about the West and its history than any man before he died, once wrote of Kit Carson the famous mountain man and Indian scout, who was a man of small stature. He said he was five foot four and cougar all the way. Well, two of the small men I'm introducing, in fact, the three partake of that. And I want now to introduce with pride my undersecretary, your fellow Californian, Jim Carr. Jim, come and take a bow, please. <laughs> I'm very proud to present Congressman Bernie Fitz. <laughs> My good friend, on behalf of the people of the great state of California, and particularly of the people of the 16th Congressional District, it is now my high honor and great privilege to present to you the President of the United States.
Congressman Seth. Congressman Seth. Congressman, my old uh, friend and colleague in the Congress. Governor Brown. Senator Kiko. Senator Engel. Congressman Biz Johnson. Senator Richards. Mr. Brody. Mrs. O'Neill. Mr. Mayor. Secretary Udall. Under Secretary Carr, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure for me to come out here and help blow up this valley and uh, the cause of progress. We are able to do anything in this occasion. I do uh, want to say that this has been a comparatively short trip. We come all the way from the capital of our country in Washington yesterday morning, about nine o'clock, and to fly and visit the uh, largest earth roll dam in the world in Pierre, South Dakota, to visit uh, the beginning of a great new project, the Frying Pan, Arkansas, where they're going to take water from around 9,000 feet through a mountain and irrigate a whole valley below in eastern Colorado, and then to visit uh, Yosemite National Park, which belongs to all of us, fortunately, and join 1,500,000 other Americans who will visit that park this year and follow in the footsteps of a distinguished predecessor who was the last president to visit there, President Theodore Roosevelt. This is a fast trip, but if uh, it had no other benefit than to permit us to look at this valley and others like it across the country, where we can see the greenest and most richest earth producing the greatest and richest crops in the country, and then a mile away, see the same earth and see it brown and dusty and useless and all because there's water in one place and there isn't in another. I know of no better trip for any president or any member of the House or Senate or indeed any citizen, particularly those of us who live in the East where water is everywhere and is a burden to realize how very precious it is here in the Western United States. And I'm also glad to come from Washington where we are constantly struggling and seeing a progress being made almost imperceptibly to come and visit three areas, South Dakota, Colorado, and here, where progress is being made. And the important lesson in all of those projects is that progress isn't being made as a result of a sudden idea suddenly coming into fruition. This project, the Frying Pan Arkansas, and the project in South Dakota represented 10 20 and 30 years effort of devoted citizens. Things do not happen, they are made to happen. And this project is the result and our action today. Of 30 years of men, some of whom have now died, who thought that this dam would help this valley. And the other point that I think has been most useful about this trip is to see uh, how Americans can work together. We are a very independent people, 180 million. And it is hard for us to agree on any course of action. We always have some different ideas of how that course of action can be made more perfect. And yet in this case, one part of your state has been willing to help another part. In the case of Colorado, Western Colorado has been willing to divide its water with Eastern Colorado. In the case of this project and Colorado and South Dakota, the people from the Eastern United States have been willing to invest their tax money in this part of the country because they realize that as this state does well, so does the United States. Nothing could be more disastrous for this country than for the citizens of one part of the state to feel that everything that they have is theirs, and it should not be shared with other citizens of this state. Or people from the East to say there's no benefit to us in spending our money to make this valley green. That is the way to stand still. And the way to move ahead is to realize that we are citizens of one country who can freely move from one state to another. And as one state does well, so do the others. And if one state stands still, so do all the rest. Progress represents the combined will of the American people. And only when they are joined together for action, instead of standing still and thinking that everything that had to be done has been done, 
only when they join together in a forward movement that this country moves ahead and that we prepare the way for those who come after us. As Mr. O'Neill and others who made this project possible 20 years ago, they prepared the way for us. So I'm glad to come here. And I think it's a useful trip for any citizen and any president of the United States. And what this project also symbolizes is the state working with the federal government, the local communities working with the state. This program is unique in this area. There is no other project in the history of the United States where a state has put in such a large contribution to the development of its own resources and where the national government has joined with the state. This is a unique ceremony because this partnership is at the highest level. The amount of contribution of both is unique and special, and the benefits that will come from it are unique and special. And I think that those who took part in this and made it possible should feel the strongest sense of pride, because all those years when people in this state said it was impossible, and those who had water wanted to hug it and not make it available to all those who lived in dry areas. Many state administrations in California, including some of the most distinguished, wrestled with this problem. But I believe that all Californians will remember the leadership which your distinguished governor has given to this great cause of making water available to the people of this state. And I salute him for it. And the members of your congressional delegation who fought for this, and the members of the legislature, the House and the Senate here in California. This has brought your state to be the pioneer in the United States in the field of development and conservation of our natural resources. California in this area is number one. And it has helped make possible the San Luis Project, which joins all of us together as full and equal partners. In many ways, the growth problems and the conservation problems of California are the same kind of problems that our country faces. To come here from the eastern United States and to realize what a booming country this really is, it gives us new encouragement to consider what actions we can take in the 60s to make life easier for those who are coming in the 70s. We surmount these growth problems only if we work together if we engage in a great cooperative effort and learn to think of our resources in national terms, what this country needs is a broad new conservation effort worthy of the two Roosevelts, Theodore and Franklin, who lived in New York and who helped build the West. An effort to build up our resource heritage so that it will be available to those who come after us. Measured by major new stocks, and by the level of investment, 1962 will be the banner year for reclamation. But satisfactory as this record is, it is important that we push forward in these areas. One, in addition to the Cape Cod seashore, near where I live on the Atlantic Ocean, we must add two superb national seashores to our park system. One at Point Reyes here in California near San Francisco, and the other on the Gulf Coast of Texas. Second, we should enact without delay a strong wilderness bill to preserve our great wilderness from the encroachment of civilization. And three, no measure is needed more than the Youth Employment Act containing provisions for a youth conservation corps. As I said the other night, there are one million young men and women under 20 who are out of school and out of work. 25% of all those under 20 who are out of school are out of work. And there will be 8 million more of them if we don't do something about it in this decade. And one of the things we can do is make it possible for them to work in these parks and in conservation and preventing fires and pollution and all the rest in building our country and in doing that building themselves. Four, we must step up our program to convert cheap, fresh water from salt water. 
There is no scientific breakthrough, including the trip to the moon, that will mean more to the country which first is able to bring fresh water from salt water at a competitive rate. And all those people who live in deserts around the oceans of the world will look to the nation which first makes this significant breakthrough. And I'd like to have it the United States of America. And five, the federal and the state governments must find ways to make outdoor recreation spots available and to do it now. We're going to have 300 million people in another 40 years in this country. A lot of them are going to live in California and a lot of them are going to live from Illinois East. And they're going to be working shorter hours as automation and technology comes along. And where are they going to spend their time? And what beaches are they going to visit? And what forests and parks are they going to see? Unless we take the steps today to make those facilities available to them, we will have a mass city which spreads blight into the countryside and children growing up without ever seeing a natural grown tree. I think we ought to do it in the 1960s. As Theodore Roosevelt and Frank and Roosevelt helped do it for us. This is our task in the simplest terms, to strengthen the United States of America. And I'm confident that here in California, which looks to the future and not to the past, that you understand that lesson well. And I hope from this great project will spread a renewed sense of commitment by all the American people so that this country in 1962 can continue to move forward. Thank you. You behind you and across the valley. There's a plan on that projection over there, Governor, and on the opposite one over here and across the valley here. Helicopter flying, dropping smoke, which will be at the height of the dam itself, that is the crest height.